All right, welcome to part three of the wall running tutorial. Uh, in the last tutorial, we got our jumping, our double jumping working uh, with a lot nicer control when you're in the air. And in this one, we're going to actually start on the wall running specific logic. So the first uh, event we're going to tackle is on component hit. And again, this gets called whenever our capsule component hits something like a wall. Um, so the first thing we want to do is if we see we hit something, we want to check if we're actually uh, already on a wall. And did I fill this out already? Yes, we did. Okay. So if we're on a wall, we don't want to do anything because we're already on a wall. And that's where we want to be. So if we're not on a wall, we're going to want to do a branch here. And that branch is going to be um, whether or not we can actually wall run on whatever thing we just hit. So we have this function for can surface be wall ran that we need to fill out. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that next. So if you double click on this, um, the first thing we're going to need to take, oops, the first thing we're going to need to do is add an input pin for a vector and it will be called surface normal. So this is the normal of the surface that we hit. And from that, we'll be able to figure out whether or not we can uh, run on it or not. So let's go ahead and take this vector and break it into an x, y, and z component. And the first thing we want to check is that the z value of it is um, less than a certain value. And basically, this is just checking that you know we're not colliding with the ceiling. So if, if this value is less than 0, or maybe we should use um, negative 0 0.05 so that there's a little bit of a threshold so that if a wall is slightly tilted you can still wall run on it but anything beyond that uh, we don't want to be running on walls that are you know like ceilings basically we don't we don't want any of that so if it's less than um, less than zero basically then we just want to return false because we can't can't wall run on it so we will return and we need to add an output pin or a boolean. And yes, it defaults to false, so we're good. So that's one check, um, but we're not quite done yet. Um, we also got to make sure that it is not walkable. So like the ground, for example, or like a, a, very, uh, a very small incline, we still don't want to be able to wall run on that because we can walk on it. So why would we wall run on it? So to check that, um, we're going to want to make a vector, make a vector off of these X and Y. So this is basically just the X and the Y components. Sorry, I'm just cleaning this up. X and the Y components of the, uh, surface that we hit. And we want to normalize this. So it's a normal. And we want to take this dot product with the original surface normal. And I'm gonna do that so it looks kind of pretty. And basically what that's doing is it's giving us the slope of the wall. Um, the slope of the wall like on the Z axis, if that makes sense, sort of. So if, if, if the wall's too if the wall's too steep or not steep enough, um, that's what it will tell us. And from the dot product, we want to take the arc cosine, which will give us uh, the angle of the wall in degrees specifically, because we can compare that to um, something inside of the character movement component called get walkable floor angle, which is a thing built in to Unreal. So this is basically the max angle, like 45 degrees probably, that the character can uh, walk on before he starts sliding off. So if the slope of the surface that we hit is less than the max floor angle, then we want to say, hey, yes, we can walk on it. So, or sorry, we can wall run on it. So we will add a return. Or maybe we won't. Return node, like so. And that will get hooked up 
to the false, like so. So again, just to recap, um, the first thing we just check is a pretty simple early out saying like if this wall is basically a ceiling or it's you know slanted towards us basically uh, there's no way we can wall run on it so just get out um, but for all other walls we just want to make sure that we can't actually walk on the wall and if we can't walk on the wall then we return true if we can then we return false all right so I think that's all we need to do for that function so we'll go back to our do, 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 event graph and now we have this handy dandy can surface the wall ran and for the surface normal we want to hook that up to the hit impact normal i believe which is just again the normal of the surface that we hit and we want to check if this is true uh if it's true we're going to continue if it's false we're just going to stop executing because can't wall run on it uh, another thing we want to check is that we're falling. So get character movement is falling because we don't want to start wall running on a wall if we're just walking along the side of it. We want to you want to have to be in the air first. If you don't want that in your game, uh, you can just take out this check. All right. So at this point, we know the wall is runnable in terms of the slope of it. We know that we are falling. And once we know those two things, um, we can safely assume, well, almost safely assume that uh, we can run on the wall. Uh, another thing we need to check is, well, one thing we should do first is we should find the direction and the side that we're going to be running on. So we have a little function for that, for finding the run direction and the side that we're going to be running on. And again, it's not filled out yet, so we can do that first. So double click on that. And this function is also going to take in a vector for the wall normal, which is just the normal of the wall. And to check if uh, the, the first thing we want to do is figure out which side the wall is on from us. So to do that, we can just get our right vector. And we really only care about the horizontal plane of things. We don't care about uh, the vertical axis right now. So we want to convert both of these. Oops. We want to convert both of these to 2D vectors. So 2 vector 2D. And that will get rid of the Z component. And then once we have that, we're going to take the dot product of those two vectors. And we want to check if it is um, greater than zero. And if it is, then, well, okay, so we'll just do a select mode here. So select, and we're gonna be setting the wall run side. So we'll drag that in, drag this over, oops, like so, and hook this up here. All right, so if the dot product, oh, these lines. All right, so if the dot product is greater than zero, which is true, then we know the wall is on our right. Uh, otherwise, we know it's on our left. So we will set that like so. And then the only thing we need to figure out is the wall run direction. Um, oh, sorry, I shouldn't be setting this here. Uh, just delete this real quick and create a local variable. And we'll just call it side local. So we know it's local. And this is a E wall run side. Because we don't, this is a constant pure function. We don't actually want to be changing our variables. We'll, we'll uh, set it later. So just set this local one for now, like so. Um, all right. And then the other thing we need to do is figure out the uh, the wall run direction. So to do that, um, we want to do another select off of the side that we're running on, and we're going to take this wall normal. So the one that we got passed in, get wall normal. Just to, just to clarify, this is the same as this, as, as if I were to drag it over. I, I think some people don't are not aware that you can just um, like right click and get access to the input pins like this, but you can. But that's all that is. This is just the input pin. And we're going to take the cross product again of 
um, either the up if it's right or the down if it is on the left side of us um, because again the cross product will give us a a vector that's perpendicular to the two vectors that we're taking in so we're taking in the wall normal which is the normal of the wall and the up vector or the down vector depending on which way we're running so that will give us a vector parallel to the wall and that is the direction we want to run in so uh, we need to return some stuff so click over here on the uh, function and add two outputs one of them is going to be called direction and one of them is the side and the direction is a vector the side is a e wall run side and right click add return node oh it already added one sorry <laughs> get the add get the return node that it added hook it up and this goes here and our local side that we set earlier over here drag that in and return that so again just to recap real quick uh, passes in the normal of the wall we figure out which side of the wall it is from us based on our right vector and then we uh, figure out which direction we need to run which is a direction parallel to the wall and we return both of those things all right so back in the event graph we now have our find run direction and side filled out and the wall normal is once again this hit impact normal so we'll drag that over and make it straight so it's pretty okay and from here we want to set we want to actually set our variables so our wall run direction gets set to this and our wall run side gets set to this all right so now these two are set um, the final thing we need to check before we can say yes we are clear to wall run is that we're holding down the correct keys and we need to check that after these get set because um, the keys that you need to hold down uh, change depending on which uh, wall you're trying to run on on the right or the left if you're running on the right you have to hold down D or right if you're running on the left you have to hold down A or left so that's why we needed to do this first um, and once we have that we can call our last little check here for our required keys down um, and this function again we need to fill out uh, this one's pretty simple so double click on it um, no matter which side of the wall we're on we need to be holding down the forward key so grab our forward axis which again is just um, a value from negative one to positive one where positive one is if we're holding down w negative one is if we're holding down s um, and we want to just make sure that this is greater than zero um, you can use zero but i'm going to use like 0 0.1 because if you had a controller hooked up um, the value will you know you want to be you don't want to like barely be pressing the joystick and have it work you want to actually have you know some decent amount of pressure on the joystick to be moving forward uh, so that's why I use 0 0.1. But basically it's just saying, hey, are we holding down the forward button or joystick? So if we're holding down the forward button, um, we can continue. If we're not, we're just going to add a return node. And we need an output pin. That's a Boolean. And we're just going to say return false because we're not even we're not even moving forward. Or we're not even holding down the forward button. So no, we're not holding down the right keys. Uh, but if we are holding down the forward button, we need to uh, check if we're holding down the correct left or right key depending on which side of the wall we're on so to do that um, just drag in the wall run side and we'll use uh, well, we'll use a switch and hook that up so if we're on the left side of the, or if the wall is on our left side then we want to take the right axis and we want to make sure that it is greater than uh, zero or again 0.1 is probably a better thing to use and we can just go ahead and return that so I'm just going to copy this return node and hook it up like so so if we're on the left side of a wall then we need to be holding down the right key so if the right axis is greater than 0.1 then return true 
Um, but if we're on the right side of the wall, then we basically want to do the opposite. We want to say, let's copy this. We want to say if this is less than zero or even better, negative 0 0.1, we are going to return that. So basically it's just saying, just making sure that we are pressing the correct direction depending on which side of the wall. All right, so I think that's all we need. Yes, that looks good. So we'll go back to the event graph uh, over here. And we can now branch off of this. And again, this is all happening when we hit something. So we're just checking a whole bunch of things. You know, can we run on it? Are we falling? Are the required keys down? If all of that is true, then we can finally say begin wall run. Hooray. Um, I'm just trying to think if I should make another video. I probably should, because I think this one's probably gone a little long. All right, so I will continue with this in part four.